Welcome to the Marriage Day Podcast. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm joined today by wife Karen. Karen, great to have you Hi, here. Hi, thank you. It's good to be here. And we're here to help you to thrive in your marriage and to overcome issues that you might be dealing with or will deal with in the future. And today we're talking about creating a climate for total openness. Now, we have a new book that has come out and it's called I Will. And it's a devotional book, a daily devotional book for couples. 365 daily devotions for couples. And every day begins with I will, with a declaration of I will. Takes two or three minutes to do it as a couple. If you want a copy of the book, just go to xomarriage.com or go to amazon.com. This is the biggest book that we've ever put out. And by the way, it's also a gift book. At the front of the book, it says, at the front of the book, it has a page that says, you know, given to and given by and what date, what occasion. We also have a leather bound edition that's going to be coming out in April as a gift uh, edition for marriages and special for weddings and special occasions like that. So I will is what we're talking about today. But th- that we're talking about today, I will provide a climate for total openness with my spouse. This is something that we've always had in our marriage, mm-hmm. Karen, and mm-hmm. from the very beginning um, and of uh, being safe to share with means that I'm able to share without you going crazy, without, <laughs> you know, judgmentalism, mm-hmm. uh, legalism, that kind of stuff. Now, I do want to bring a caveat here, and that is, you know, if someone is committing a crime mm-hmm. and they come to you and they say, well, I'm abusing children or something like yeah. that. Well, that's something that they may say to you, but you've got to take an action beyond them sharing it. Mm -hmm. You you can't, you can't say to a person, regardless of what you say, I promise I'll never, I won't do anything. Mm -hmm. They may confess a murder or something like that. But if you're sharing emotions, you're sharing something you're struggling with, or maybe something you did in your past Mm -hmm. or something, having a safe place to share means that I feel confident that I can share with you and you'll hear my heart. And it's not, I'm not going to pay a price. Right. Well, I, that's what we, like you said, we started our relationship with. You know, you and I both were very honest and open about our past, about things we've done. Um, I mean, we kept no secrets from each other. You know, I, was, I always said, number one thing is just don't lie to me. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have the honest truth than lies. And I think that's why it's so important to be open and honest, because it builds that foundation of trust that uh, if he told me that, then I know you know, that I can trust his heart because, you know, I, you know, it's just one of those things that always felt, you know, secure in that I could not only share my issues, but you could share yours and I wasn't judging you for it. We had a a situation of these, some people that we knew, we didn't know him, you know, real close personally, but we knew him. And he um, uh, came home and said to his wife, uh, when I travel, because he had a job, he traveled a lot. He said, I have, I enjoy a glass of wine uh, when I travel because she didn't drink and she didn't want him drinking. Mm-hmm. She divorced him. <laughs> and I mean, she went ballistic. Well, needless to say, that was not a safe environment chair no. because what he was saying to her was, yeah, I just want you to know, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm not with you, I'm, I'm having a glass of wine. Well, she felt like that he had just violated the entire mm-hmm. cover of their relationship. In fact, she called him an alcoholic. Right. And he was drinking a glass of wine every now and then. If you overreact when your spouse mm-hmm. shares, they're not going to share with you. Well, there's nothing worse than being married to a legalist. That's right. And so, you know, you know, ch- ch- talk those things out. Because if one or the other partner is, you know, a legalist, then that's another whole different you know, thing that you need to go to counseling. And legalism for. means it's there's no grace, mm-hmm. but it's extra biblical. Mm-hmm. It's, it's judgmental. It's judgmentalism. Uh, you have to be perfect. You have to read your Bible so much. You have to pray so much. You can't ever do this. You can't ever do this. And so grace just means we're human beings. Mm-hmm. We make some mistakes. And I love you anyway, and you don't have to perform for me to get my love. Mm-hmm. And so legalism, if you're legalistic, <clears throat> I promise you, no one's going to share with you mm-hmm. because you're the most judgmental person in the world. Uh, but but the other side of that is a graciousness that says, I want you to share. And like you said, the sin in our marriage is lying. Mm-hmm. We, we don't mind sharing. We mind lying. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but the other thing, too, is if someone shares with you, your spouse shares with you, and you pick up the phone and call your mother. 
<laughs> oh gosh, that's no, 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 no. Or, don't or your best that. friend, and <laughs> you and don't get to share anything in your marriage with your your parents. In other words, you find out you share with your spouse, <laughs> and then you find out two or three days later, someone says, "Oh, I heard you guys." Yeah, that's down. Yeah, that's and you're saying what? <laughs> and you know that you, your spouse shared it. So to be your spouse's safe place, and this is what we're talking about, mm -hmm. is to be your spouse's safe place. They need to know. You can share anything with me. Now, there was a, a man uh, that uh, I knew. Uh, he was in the church that we pastored for many years. He had had probably 20 to 30 affairs. Mm -hmm. He had a job that he traveled. And he, he did, and he at a camp that we were at, uh, he confessed to a group of men. Maybe there was four or five of us. He confessed to us that he had been traveling for many years and had many relationships with many women on the road. And he said, should I tell my wife? And I said, absolutely. You go home. Another man that was sitting there said, don't ever tell her anything. <laughs> well, this guy went home and told his wife that mm -hmm. she could have left him. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a biblical sin. I mean, it was a biblical reason for divorce. If she would have wanted one, their marriage uh, not only was healed, their marriage went to a new level. His honesty, and I would say, first of all, his honesty, but secondly, her graciousness. Well, and I think that a woman can tell the difference between, I'm sorry, but, yeah. and somebody who's truly repentant. Like, you know, the night you came home, that you came over and, and repented to me about the bachelor party. I mean, I'd never seen you that humble. And yeah. I have a feeling that the story you just told, he probably was a different person. He probably came home extremely repentant and humbled by what had happened. Well, there are things that you can confess to the Lord and just privately, but there are other things you need to confess to somebody else. You mm -hmm. know, James 5 tells us, confess your faults mm -hmm. to one another that you may be healed. And so sometimes there is a healing that comes simply by telling somebody else. And so to have an openness in your relationship it means that you have to be a safe place. Mm -hmm. Your spouse feels is well, for example, your best friend is the person you can talk to about anything. Mm -hmm. It's the person you call first with good news or with bad news. Mm -hmm. Okay, If they're not your best friend, you're not going to call them. And so we want to be each other's best friend. We want to be each other's safe place. And it's not just sins or bad things that we want to talk about. It could be dreams. It could be desires. It could be that I say, Karen, you know, I really want to start a golfing career and I'm tired of the ministry and I want to start a golfing career. <laughs> and, I, and it may be a stupid thought, which it is. I'm 70 years old. It's not going to no, happen. No, and you've had those slides and you've spoken <clears throat> them to me, but I didn't make fun of you. No, but I'm just saying, but dreams and desires I know. are also very important to share. But here's the thing. So if your spouse is sharing with you and you say, well, that's stupid. <laughs> you know, I mean, and that happens. You know, <laughs> I did it does. early in our marriage when I didn't understand you and I didn't understand the way you were different than me. But if you judge your spouse, if you reject your spouse, all those kinds of things, whether they're sharing something good or bad, they're going to shut down. Well, you know, I'm thinking about the side of God, of, you know, and Scripture says, and you can tell me where it is, but it says um, that everything hidden will be revealed. Right. You know, you can't hide things. God's going to, some, if something is festering or in a dark place in your marriage, God wants the light to be shined. Sh and it makes a difference. Yeah, because once the light shines on it, it's like you, you everything comes to the, you know, it's like everything hidden is, is, is not good. It's, darkness is not good. And so, you know, to have the best marriage with, with trust and um, just the ability to be able to talk to each other, you know, bring it to the light because it's, it's, it's still in there. It's festering somewhere. Int intimacy means inner closeness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe that sex is intimacy and sex is a part of intimacy, but intimacy is mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. And if you're mentally, emotionally, and spiritually closed off to each other, mm -hmm. it's going to affect the physical. Mm -hmm. And so our, our encouragement to you is this comes from our new 365 day devotional called I Will. And this this today is called I Will Provide a Climate for Total Openness with My Spouse. And so maybe one of you just needs to do the right thing first. Maybe both of you are kind of closed off. and You don't feel safe around each other. But the I Will here is I will create an atmosphere of total openness with my spouse. And if both the husband and the wife do that, and I always encourage the men to take the lead, 
if the husband and wife do that, it will take your marriage to another level. And whatever happens, you can know that you have a safe place to share with your spouse and your spouse, not your mother, not your best friend, not your <laughs> boss at work. Your spouse should always be your safe place. And you should fight for that. Let me say one other thing. That is, if you have issues that you can't resolve, get help. Mm -hmm. You know, go to a pastor, go to a friend. Here at XO Marriage, we have counselors. We have marriage coaches. And you can go to XO Mediators, xomarriage.com, under mediation. And we have hourly, half day, full day, two day. You can get all the help you need right here. If you need, if you need help in your marriage, go outside to resolve the larger issues. But we encourage you, create a climate for total openness with your spouse. We hope this has been helpful to you. We'll see you next time right here on the Marriage Day Podcast. Goodbye. Hey, this is Brent Evans with Exo Marriage, and I want to thank you for listening to the Marriage Today Podcast. We believe your marriage has a 100% chance of success if you do it God's way. If you enjoyed today's teaching and want to keep learning, Hey, subscribe to the Marriage Today podcast and take some time to leave us a review. Your reviews help us spread the word and can encourage someone else in need. For more great marriage content, check out xomarriage.com where you can see all of our marriage building resources, articles, and live events.